I got a tip with a headline, 100 mil risk bot farm in PK world or bug abuser, which has screenshots of lots of accounts in the high risk PVP world in full obsidian. The tip says they're risking 10 mil and that the tip off person killed 10 of them already and that there's another account not equipping anything other than a set of flowers. Very mysterious and interesting tip off. Like 12 hours later, I went to check it out. I had been slacking on my emails. No one was there. I decided just in case to check the other teleport spots on the Xerix Talisman and in other PvP worlds. No one was there either. So I run back to the original spot, right next to the entrance to the catacombs, and as I'm running back, I get a glimpse of two accounts, and it looks like they were trading. One hopped before I even got my mouse on it. I mean, I didn't expect anyone to even be here anymore. The other took a couple seconds to log out, and I was too low level to attack it. I would have gotten it. It was a combat level 99. And the account had 80s combat stats, 43 prayer, and no other stats. And of course was risking a lot of gold. I'll tell you later why I'm blurring out the usernames here. So they're doing something in PvP worlds, which means they might come back. And I decided to spend the rest of the day scoping the spot, and rotating around the other teleport spots in case they were moving around Zaya trying to avoid me. And while I was doing that, I found a couple accounts in Hosidius, both with 200 mil cooking XP. So I quickly leveled up my low-level major a little bit and went to attack them, which was a complete waste of time. That building is not in the PvP zone. But why are there so many low-level cooking accounts with 200 mil XP in PvP worlds? Okay, anyway. I also geared up my main Surpugger in case I found those weird obsidian accounts again. I want to make sure I can attack them. And about six hours later, I logged in and they were there. I got the teleblock on the account with flowers off, and then the obsidian account didn't log out immediately and I teleblocked it too. And it's not the same obsidian account as before either, it's a lower level combat. And the obby account seems to be attacking the account with the flowers. I ended up killing the obby account, but the flower account got away. It's a safe zone just to the west. And the flower account seems to be a one defense build, while the obby account has 70s and 80s combat stats and 43 prayer, just like the other account. And the loot, 9.7 mil. And the person who tipped me off said they killed 10 of these accounts. So I went back to camp it out again. They keep coming back even when they die. And at this point, I have a pretty good theory about what's going on. And we'll get right into it after this. I've got a surprise for you. It's called ExpressVPN, and it's super easy to use. Choose from one of the hundreds of servers ExpressVPN offers across dozens of countries, then just click connect. ExpressVPN does a few important things. First, they route your connection through the server you selected, changing your online location and protecting your data. This also masks your IP address, which protects you from repeated DDoS attacks, something unfortunately common in the RuneScape community. But the real reason I use ExpressVPN is their devotion to performance. They've literally released an open source VPN protocol called Lightway that minimizes speed reduction, which is why ExpressVPN VPN consistently ranks number one above other VPN services. So, go to www.expressvpn.com slash surpugger to find out how you can get three months for free. The link is in the description. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. So I went back to see if I could kill more of those obby accounts, but right when I hopped back through the PvP world scouting it out, there was another account there in one of the PvP worlds. I was too busy scouting and I hopped mid-conversation, but then, a minute later, I get a Discord message request saying, hello with a screenshot of the conversation I just had with that player in game. And they responded in game, looking for you right after I hopped. Pretty strange, right? And before we get into that, let me explain what I think was happening. Those obsidian accounts were training and the one defense account was spam teleporting to avoid taking damage. It's multi-combat there, so you could train, you know, 10 or 20 accounts by yourself at once in a pretty AFK manner. Check this out, I tested it. The teleporter just spams the same teleport on the Xerix Talisman, while the Obsidian account just attacks it once, then auto attacks it as it teleports. All you need to do is menu swap on the necklace so that you can just spam left click it. You don't even need to look at your screen. That account then doesn't take any damage. The teleport animation stops that, which means you could get 20 accounts all attacking it at once. But this is why it's worthwhile. The XP rates are really, really good. I brewed down on an account to one defense, and on another account, attacked it for like 30 seconds. I maxed out at about 122k strength XP per hour, without even using any prayer. And back in Discord, I asked if this suspicious person was doing all the training on the Abby accounts, and they said they may have more information on the matter, and basically told me what I had already assumed, that they were training. They asked that I block out the usernames, but didn't tell me why. And they weren't cheating from what I could see, and I figured I was ruining their hidden spot, so it's the least I could do. Some people don't want their usernames in videos, I guess. Mystery solved. 
What I'm about to show you is only in initial stages of development. Some botters, I guess, seem to just like to cause chaos, or maybe it's a rival farm owner, or a community member who is fed up. Anyway, one of them decided to make a bot that kills other bots. That's right, a PK bot set up in wildy locations where bots rule. Where bots also use inhuman reaction times to log out before players can even attack them. Let's look at a preview of this bot. Here it is at Lava Dragons. It's just equipping knives and the bot auto hops worlds at popular bot safe spots at Lava Dragons and tick perfectly attacks them as it logs in. I guess this is a good starting location for it because these bots don't run away. When it gets a kill, it loots and then it hops worlds. Very, very simple script. It banks when it has a full inventory and it looks like it runs all the way to Ferox Enclave. The guy who runs it sent me a screenshot of a few inventories of loot, 300k, so it holds its own on the money making aspect of things as well. Now obviously I don't support any botting, but if I had to choose a bot to support, I think it would be this one. Like can you imagine how frustrating it would be for botters if some other botters started making bots to PK and farm their bots 24-7? Then the regular botters would know how it feels to have your money maker ruined by bots. The bots that PK bots would also probably profit a lot, like a rev bot PK K bot could probably make 3 to 5 mil per hour. Lava Dragons isn't the only place this script is used at. The deep wildy wine of Zamorak bot farm was a perfect target as well. Whoever runs that bot farm probably uses some sort of prime or discount memberships because when the farm is up, they're on basically every world. And the crazy thing is, you could probably disrupt this whole bot farm with just like 3 or 4 anti-bot bots <laughs> hopping through worlds. They don't even have to kill the wine of Zami bots. They could even just attack them once and hop because the bots run when they're attacked all the way back to the mage bank. So each bot could just cover 20 to 30 worlds in a loop pretty easily and prevent the entire farm from getting much, if any, loot. Or if the script was a little bit more advanced, it could entangle them, secure the kill 100%, and these bots drop stacks of law runes that they're using to telegrab the wines of Zamorak. So the PKing bot could stay here forever, theoretically, collecting hundreds of thousands of law runes. Plus, if it actually gets the kill, it takes a lot longer for this wine of Zamorak bot to set up again. Obviously, I'd hope that whatever loot the PK bot got would be destroyed. The bot was even set up at the Runite Ore Rocks in Deep Wildy. There are lots of level 20 to 40 bots here mining. It looks like some of those run when they're attacked and others don't. If they don't run, it's a kill for the anti-bot bot. But if they run, well I guess at least the script was disrupted. The one big problem I have with this bot is that it could definitely attack a real player. It doesn't actually know that these are bots. It's just that like 99% of the people here are bots. It would be really funny if the bot asked the target to type something while it was attacking them. And if the target does, it gets off of them. Basically, a way to detect bots, and if the script deems it is a bot, kill it. Pretty ridiculous now that there are bots that hunt other bots in RuneScape. PvP worlds have changed, especially after the release of Bounty Hunter. Basically, all PKers are out of PvP worlds. The only people really left are Deathmatchers. I found something interesting about this. A bot that profits from these deathmatchers. You can usually find looter bots in PvP worlds at Lumbridge and the Grand Exchange. And sometimes, there are bot high scores for certain bot scripts that show basically the total loot accumulated from the script. Data aggregated from all the users of the script. One such script is a looter bot, and I found the high scores. Check this out. 13 billion GP collected from this script. Much of it seems to be from looting deathmatchers. 3.6 bill in coins, 39 primordial boots worth 1 bill, 10 dragon claws, 5 void wakers, 557 abyssal whips, all picked up by just looter bots, probably level 3s. And the list goes on, you can see they're active in free to play worlds too, having picked up 440 hill giant clubs, 69 gilded 2h swords and more. I did not realize that looter bots could make so much GP. As I was scrolling through botting websites looking for new scripts to investigate, I came upon an interesting link posted by one of the botting platform's devs that took me to an interactive map of RuneScape. But not just any map. This is called a web walking map, and it appears to be used to help with script development. If you think of bots as trains, the web walking lines are bot tracks, and once a webwalker plugin is built, any script on that platform can call on the webwalker to walk bots wherever it supports. As you can see on this map, bot rail lines cover most of RuneScape, 
And this is just for one botting client, and we can use it to see where bots can go and make assumptions about what bots exist based on where they're programmed to be able to move. All of the obvious locations are covered, you know, God Wars, Barrows, Abyss Runecrafting bots, Catacombs of Karen Slayer bots, Forthos Dungeon for the Druids and Red Spider Eggs, popular bot farms. But let's look at the areas I'm surprised by, or at the very least, I've never found bots in. It looks like there may be some activity in the Theater of Blood. There's a trail right up to the entrance. Now, a lot of this is also definitely used for questing, so maybe not gold farming or training bots there, which is why I've never seen bots in some of these locations. For example, I've never found bots at the Piscatoris fishing colony, probably for the quest, but they could also be fishing monkfish up there. Also, miscellanea is covered. I'm not sure why. Are there really miscellanea bots? Interestingly, Chambers of Zarek is completely mapped out as well, as is Mount Karum, so probably Slayer bots accessing that dungeon to farm the hydras inside or do Slayer. Look at this, Apatol is completely mapped out, most likely for a Monkey Madness quest bot, but maybe even the Chinchampa ranged training method there is being botted. Even the resource area near Corsair Cove is mapped out. I tried to find bots there, but it's deserted. Maybe a past bot script was using it. It just goes to show how much of the game is being botted. There's even a line to Scorpia in the wilderness. Multiple tips have come in. Bots hiding in the Varrock West Bank basement. They all have 98 fletching and at least 99 magic. Found eight in the first 10 worlds I hopped through. For all that effort hiding, they don't hop when you log in. So it's pretty easy to spot them. And yeah, they're just alking down there. Hopefully they're banned soon. I often get tips about this bot farm, but this is the first time I was quick enough to catch and kill them in time. I don't know what the bot farm is for, but waves of bots train using the deep wielding prayer altar. They log out in one to two ticks, but if you're using knives, you can get them when you hop in. And they drop, you know, up to an inventory of dragon bones. If you didn't have to bank, it would be probably a few mil per hour, but I didn't even pick them up because it's not worth all that running. There must have been at least a few hundred, some hopping through worlds while I was there so I could just attack them as they hopped in. I killed six within two minutes. If I had to guess, they're probably something like Red Spider Egg Collecting Bots, which is a huge bot farm in the Forthos Dungeon, and they're probably just getting like 43 prayer to protect from melee there. They weren't on the high scores then, and they still aren't a week later though. Maybe they were banned.